Hello and welcome to another video by the Pathfinders United. My name is John, director of the Golden Airs Pathfinder Club in Petersburg, Virginia. Today we'll be going over backpacking. Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be going over backpacking. Our instructor for the day will be DJ. We had a little technical difficulties on the original footage. So what we're gonna do is go over the portion of the video that was left off. If you're doing backpacking, day hiking, or any type of event that you're going out with either yourself, your family, or with your group, you wanna do what we call planning and consideration. And what planning consideration covers is the who, what, where, when, why, and the how. Who will be attending? What am I going to do when I get there? Where will this event take place? When will this event take place? Why do I need to attend this event? And how will I get there? Also, this is uh, part one of a two-part video. Um, the first part here, we'll be going over some of the essentials that you need for backpacking. In the second video, we'll go over actually how to properly pack your backpack. Also, in the description below, there is also uh, another video, How to Pack for the Amazing Race, which has some very good information there as well. So let's transition now to DJ. And year, time of year, season. if I have the opportunity to look ahead and see where I'm actually going at? What's that called? Uh, Three letter word. <laughs> what? I took the opportunity to go on Google and I did a map of the church. Look at that. Pulled it right up. So at least I know the area in which I'm operating in. All right. So am I concerned about water crossing here in this area around the church? Where at? Where's the water at? Yeah, I should oh, know no, where the water's at. It's, it's, you don't even got to look at the map. It's <laughs> over there. It's, it's over there. Way. You go down. Way. So there is a water crossing, possibly water crossing, so an area around water that I'll be operating in, yes? Yeah. So I need to plan for that. So a map is always a good idea to have with you, all right? All right. We're not going to go too, in, too far into the weeds with this. We're going to stop short right here. But I, I want to know where I'm going, what I need to take with me, what's the weather going to be like. What am I going to do when I get there, meaning food and sustainment um, items? And then, of course, and with the map, I want to know how I'm going to get there. I'm going to have my route ahead of time in order to get there safely. So let's start with the first one. We went over equipment and gear, all right? I like to start building a model from the bottom up every time I do it. So we start with what's, the, what's on your feet? Somebody tell me. Shoes. Socks. What kind of shoes are we looking for? Boots. boots. What kind of boots? Combat. Combat. Not necessarily. Waterproof boots. Because you're not going to combat. So you don't necessarily need combat boots. All right, there's strict requirements for combat boots. What considers a boot to be a combat boot? I just haven't been wearing them for a long period of time now, so I'm comfortable wearing them. All right, that don't make, that don't, that's not making sure that you're comfortable wearing them. So a good what type of boot? Waterproof. You can waterproof it. Hiking. Hiking boot. Hiking boot. All right, you want a good hiking boot. You don't want a tennis shoe. All right, these boots. You can see the bottom on these, they're sort of smooth. They're made for lightweight road surfaces. Everybody see that? While these are specifically designed for off-road use. On the trail, they have a deeper lug, a heel. They can help grip going up and down hills, all right? So the, depending on the terrain you're going on, if you're just going on, on the street, on a, what we call a road march, on the highway, this is good. This is exactly what you want. If you're going somewhere that's going to require you going up and down hills, off-roading, on trails, this is more of the boot that you want. This is more of the lug or the sole that you want on your shoe. All right, ankle support. All right, you don't want to get out there and roll your ankle, which can still happen even in a boot. All right, but the more support you have, you don't necessarily have to go with the eight to ten inch boot, but you definitely want one about six inches, something that covers your ankle joint. All right. So from your feet, what's next up? Or well, what else is included with your with your socks. feet? Socks. Socks. What kind of socks? Wool socks. Wool socks. Wool socks. Everybody says wool socks, and they go. So what if I can't find wool socks? Two, two pairs. Two pairs yeah. of uh, 
Regular, regular socks. socks. Regular socks or some All right, so I go with what's issued in the Army is a cotton blend sock. All right, it has spandex in it, has a few different items in it, synthetic materials in it that makes it comfortable for wear. You definitely want something with some cushioning in it. All right, so if I can't get a full on wool sock, anybody know what these are? Socks. Yes, what kind? Dress socks. Dress socks. All right, nylon, polyester blend type sock. You put this on first, and then you still can put your cotton or your blend sock on over that. This is to help with preventing blisters. We don't want blisters, all right? Blisters will take your backpack and trip to a halt really quick, all right? You get blisters, no one wants to keep going, all right? So we use this. You can also use in place of this knee highs, stockings, all right? You can use those in place of, of a poly blend, a polyester or nylon blend in order to keep your foot from chafing inside of your socks and getting hot spots. All right? What's next? We're going up. Um, pants? Yeah, you want some pants. Why don't you want shorts? Because if it's cold. If, it, if it's cold. All right, if it's cold, what else? Um, if you're going into an environment that has lots of bugs. Bugs, there you go. What else? Um, what? Uh, when you cool, um, buy plants with a lot of like briars. Mm-hmm. Poison ivy, that'll shut your party down quick, won't it too? All right. So that being said is, you want to be able to protect your legs when you're moving. Protect your skin as much as possible when you're moving through, especially a wooded area. All right. If I'm going just down the road and back, I don't care about wearing shorts. But if I'm going in a wooded area where I know there's known to be bugs, ticks, chiggers, um, poison ivy, poison oak, I want to cover that up. I let that stuff brush off of my trousers or my pants as opposed to touching my skin. All right. Lastly. Um, you can see with military issue trousers, they normally have blousing straps at the bottom, but you can do them with your regular um, trousers that you own also. Some people say it was done as a design, but it's done to keep bugs from entering the bottom of your trouser leg. So most times when operating out in a wooded area, you'll see that we tie them off, and that's to keep bugs from getting in there. You don't want ticks. Ticks are made for a bad day with Lyme disease. You do not want ticks getting under your, um, under your pants legs. All right, so we're moving on up. What's next? Sure. What's going to hold your belt up? We don't wear it. I mean, I gave you no. an answer already. Right. <laughs> Forgive me. So, your belt. You want a good heavy duty belt. All right. I'm not telling you to go out and buy one of these belts. Matter of fact, when this class is done, I'm probably going to give you some of these belts that I have because I can't fit them anymore. I got bigger since I'm in the Army. But you want a pretty sturdy nylon belt. All right. Does not have to be a metal buckle, but you would prefer something that's very sturdy. Um, they make some pretty um, tough plastic ones also, but you want something that's sturdy. A um, couple reasons for a good belt. I can use it for to keep your pants up. Or, that's one thing. Or like to, if you don't need your belt but you're just wearing it, and tie your legs off so if you have wishy long pants, you can tie it off so when you're sleeping at night, the bugs don't attack your legs. Alright, have we been through first aid already? Yes. Alright, what can I use to make a quick splint? Um, dumb. Well, if, you're, if you have like, no baby to it on, you can use stick. Stick, and what can I use to secure that stick with? The belt. I can also use it for a sling around my neck. I can put my hand through it. I can use it for a sling to keep that, that limb immobilized also. So a good sturdy belt is always good when you're out. All right? you think ahead, uh, multi-uses for the same item, not just one use only. All right. Then we move up from our belt, we move up to shirt. shirt. What type of shirts? What type of material are we looking for? Uh, long sleeve. Um, I would say line. No, it's I think it's polyester. You think? Yeah, because it um, keeps it. Not 100% sure. All right. Why wouldn't I wear cotton? Because that soaks in. That soaks in a lot of water. It soaks in your sweat. So in the summer, what would I want to wear? Polyester. polyester. In the winter, what would I want to wear? Cotton. Um, All right. So we're gonna go in reverse of that. So cotton does absorb a lot of water. So I want in reverse. In the summer, I'm gonna wear cotton because it also breathes pretty decently. Okay. In the winter or colder months, I'm going to wear polyester, something that fries a little bit of, doesn't hold the sweat in, doesn't hold moisture in, all right, and is moist, it was considered to be moisture wicking, all right, that's what I want to wear in the winter months, all right. Then we go up from there. What's next? Your hat or your, um, your face gear. Yeah. Face gear. What am I putting on my face? Goggles. Why? Glasses. It protects your eyes. From, uh, what am I protecting them from? Sand. So what happens when I'm moving through the woods 
Your trees can smack you. There we go. Someone moves a tree, a tree branch in front of me, and I'm behind them. All right. A good set of clear eye protection always is is essential. And then from there up to hat. What type of hat? Uh, Anything that covers your ears. Want to cover your ears. So weather conditions again. If it's cool. if it's summer and it's 80 degrees, what type of hat am I wearing? And sunny all day. Something with the visor. Something with the visor. All right. But if it's 40 degrees, and that's the high for the day. Tonight's going to be in the mid-20s. What type of headgear am I going to wear? You're going to wear something that covers the ears, insulates the head. All right. Wants to make sure that you keep as much heat, all right, closest to the body as possible. All right. So you see I bought a whole bunch of other items. We're going to go into um, some external items that you're going to carry with you now. So if I'm going for more than a day, what are some of the things that I think I might want to bring with me? You're going to need your underclothes. Underclothes, all right. You're going to need your shovel because you're going to have to dig your latrine. Okay. You're one. going to need you some food and water. There we go. And then you're going to need you some boots. It depends on where you're going. And you're going to definitely need to pack your jacket because nobody knows the weather. Well, you check the weather. Depending on the weather. Okay. In Virginia here in the last few weeks, you can pack all of this stuff and still be wrong. Because <laughs> it's been 60 degrees at day. It's been low 20s, teens at night. That's a big drastic change. And the desert does that a lot also. It'll go from a high of 120 during the day. And if you get a 75 degree night, that's cold in the desert. Okay. That is very cold in the desert. 75 degrees. To here, we would pray for a 75 degree night. But in the desert, with the temperature dropping that drastically, we're talking almost 50 degrees, all right, in less than a couple hours, that can be really, really um, torturous on your body. All right, go ahead. You got a question? No, I was going to say, um, wouldn't you have to bring a tarp and, like, some rope for a night? What? For what? The tarp? Yeah, what you can use a tarp for? Just in case you can um, make your own shelter, bring the, um, move stuff, put it on top. You said it already. Shelter. All right. You want, you want to definitely own some shelter when you get there. What are some other things we're going to bring? You some rope. rope. Some rope for? Um, yeah. Not tying, lashing, net making. Help with your shelter and survival. Okay. So we're going to go into some of the packs. I see that you all brought with you already. So our packs are in two generalized areas. They're called internal and external frames. All right. Internal frame pack is exactly what it says. The frame for the pack itself is inside. Pretty much like, aim of yours, like this one, all right? Areas of levels of rigid, uh, rigidity inside, rigid material used to help sustain the pack itself, conforms to the body better. For someone that's smaller, this is the way that you want to go, all right? It's a pretty nice pack you got it too. All right. The United States Army issues you a couple different ones, one of them being an external pack. Here's the difference between the two. All right, for this young man here with the internal pack, internal frame pack, he can't adjust the height as far as his kidney strap is concerned. All right, with the external packs, you have that opportunity. So if this young lady here was to have to wear this pack, I can adjust. Okay. <laughs> so if I was, if we were to move and she needed to carry this pack, I could take this strap off, adjust it up to her height, above her hips, where she then can buckle it. All right, even though her size, she is very, very small and still may not be able to carry this, but I can adjust this more than I can adjust the internal frame pack. Everybody track it. Everybody got to check a hole? Check. Okay. okay. So that being said is, these are multifunctional, they're very, very expensive, and they're very durable. All right? Don't take away anything that you got from internal pack. I don't want everybody going out trying to buy one of those. All right? Don't do it. All right? <laughs> Just keep using the ones that we have now that are very, very successful. So why do I have this here? Somebody tell me. Laundry. Laundry. Yep. I want to do laundry with But in case of an emergency... And I just couldn't get a pack, and we just need to leave right now. A simple laundry bag can do me the same as a pack. All right? I can throw my items in there. I can tie it off. I 
I can grab the end, put the bulky piece of the end of the corner through, and tighten down. All right? Do the same thing on this side. Loop it through. I can tie it off. There you go, put that on. All right, I still can move out successfully with very minimal basic items that you've seen and can access. Everybody got that? All right. So we talked about water, going around water. This bag is what's considered to be a waterproof bag. All right, it has a number of uses, but the number one use is waterproof. All right, first off, if it's waterproof, I want to check for I want to check for holes. How do I check for holes? You put water in there. I'm gonna put water in there first. Go ahead. Same thing. That's a good idea. But an easier one, without getting it all wet, is just holding up to the light. If I can see light through here, it tells me I have a hole. All right. If I can't see light. That means I'm pretty secure, all right? Even though it could be hidden, but for the most part, waterproof bag. Don't go out and buy those because you have these. They do the same purpose, all right? You tie them off, you tie them off, you close them out properly, you can use the same exact thing with your water. What do I want a waterproof for the most part? Socks, your clothes. My underclothes, all right? So if I told you I had two days worth of clothes here, would you believe me? Yeah. All right, because it's it is. All right, inside, one pair of socks, open it up, it's called a skivvy wrap, all right, inside of that, my t-shirt, and then inside my t-shirt will be my undergarment. Everybody got that? Oh. All right. That's how we would pack. If you can fit more in less space and waterproof as much as possible, tighten it down, and carry your stuff um, to where you're going for backpacking. So, another one is a um, t-shirt roll, same exact thing, I got my t-shirt, socks, alright, inside, tuck your arm, undergarments, same exact thing, alright, you want to save as much space as possible, don't worry about it, we'll go over this again, and I'll teach you how to do this, alright, <laughs> alright, we mentioned water before, we got hydration, this is a canteen, but if you don't have a canteen, what works? You have a hydration pack, camel pack. What else works? Water bottle. Uh, uh, water bottle. There we go. You just go buy your water bottle, dollar twenty-five, and you have the same exact thing that everyone else has. All right. We talk about when we get when we get there. So our, our tools that we want for cooking. All right. This is a canteen. canteen cup. All right. But you don't have to have one of these. What else can you use? A mess kit. Mess kit. Mess kit. What else? I can take a number 10 can or the can of soup that comes in and does the same exact thing. Don't think, just because we're seeing this gear, I just happen to have this, that you have to go out and purchase this. Go ahead, ma'am. You can also just get regular plastic Tupperware. Plastic Tupperware to preserve food, but I can't cook in my plastic Tupperware. Good point. All right, no microwave. All right? All right. We're going to need, what else? How are we going to get our fire going? Uh, uh -huh. You're going to need cotton. So Mr. John brought you up to speed when I was here before on building your fire starters, but you also can use dryer. Dryer. Dryer lint. We've got a whole bunch of that, right? Everybody does yeah. laundry at home, right? Yep. Instead of taking it out and throwing it away, old pill bottle. What does that help do to it? Keep Preserve it dry. And keep it dry. Keep it dry. All right. I can pack a whole bunch in there, max it out, or I can use my fire starters that we built the other day in class. All right, and you want to take that with you also. Who knows what these are? Um, towels. How do I plan on keeping clean? There you go. These are your washcloths. All right, baby, baby wipes work. Or I can use your coin towels. They have the same purpose as a baby wipe. Take up way less space. I'm sure it's not the first time you guys have seen this. No. 
All right, so that being said, the same exact thing. I can use the corn towels, and they do the same exact thing. Help me either keep cool, wipe me off, or for personal hygiene reasons, using the same exact thing to keep me taken care of while I'm out. All right. Multi-tool, okay, if I need to harvest small branches and limbs, if I need to fix something, or if I need to operate something or move something in and out of the fire that's hot, I'll use my multi-tool, of course, get after it in that direction. Everybody try it. Oh All right. Gosh. You have your shovel. shovel. Entrenching tool also is another name used for it. All right. You can see some of them that you buy don't have the serrated edge. This can also be used to cut wood. If I'm digging, I can cut I can cut roots. All right. And it helps me with moving dirt from one place to another or helping me to um, improve my campsite. More plastic bags? Yes, ma'am. On a simple level, can you use like a, gar a gardening shovel? Yes, ma'am. Of course you can. All right. So I know a lot of times we get to the camping area backpacking. When we're going just backpacking, if I need to make emergency phone calls, I can always put my phone inside of a plastic, plastic bag and it still with touch screen, it still operates the same. Everybody got that. All right. We went over sleeping pads. Yes. yes. I want it's about time to start shutting it down for the evening. But we didn't eat yet, right? It's okay. So sleeping pads, you got a few of them. You got self-inflating. You got foam. This just happens to be self-inflating that I've never used. But you can't go off my level of comfortability for yourself. All right? It's pretty simple. Folds up pretty, pretty tight. All right? And self-inflating means exactly that. Who's going to inflate it? You. With? Your breath. Your lungs. There you go. You're going to blow it up, make it to where you want to be comfortable at, or if someone just bought a small ball pump with them, you can use the same exact thing. Weighs very little. All right. We talked about paracord. your paracord earlier. Depending on weather, we're going over, what's this? Poncho. All right. What else can your poncho be used for? Uh, a water source. For a, you said something. A shelter. Shelter. What else can it be used for? A water source. Water source. All right. What else? Sleeping bag. It's intended purpose to weatherproof your gear. All right. You can weatherproof your gear so your gear is not all soaked. And instead, the only thing that's wet is this. All right. And I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but... I've had an opportunity to work with these a lot, and these are modular sleep system or tents. All right, these are modular tents. I have an entire one-person tent inside here, with all the needed pieces in order to operate. You pretty much can go buy one of these, but I'm telling you once again, you don't need to. All right, because this is expensive. And there's other ways to get at it. We just named one, which was poncho. your poncho. All right. And here in a second, I'm going to tell you why you don't necessarily want to go buy one of these. All right. We'll, we'll set this up here in a little bit when we get outside. All right. Some extras that I always, anytime I move out, I try to bring with me. These are zip ties. zip ties. They're universal. They help just as like it's 550 cord or paracord. Zip ties are universal. They help with tying off things, making things more rigid. All right. Also, duct tape. Duct tape. I try to go everywhere whenever I'm moving out with a small amount of duct tape and some paracord. We talked about the map before. You want to know where you're going, so you're going to need a orange compass. Orange tear compass. All right. And if everything goes bad, you're going to need a some type of signaling device, yes? yes sir. All right, you can buy these. At, this is a, uh, what's this? All right. If you've never seen it before, we, it's considered a VS-17 panel. It's used for signaling, all right? I know some of the ways, somebody give me some of the ways of, that you can signal for help. Smoke, Smoke signal. Smoke signal, so it's wet and I can't get my fire going. So somebody else tell me something else. What's a reflective mirror? Reflective mirror, it's no sun's out right now, so it's not reflecting. What else? Yes, ma'am. What's 
whistle. Your whistle, all right. I got my whistle going, but now I have an aircraft in the area that's looking for me now. The search parties put out an aircraft, all right. Something as simple as this, this is universal for someone's in the area and they're trying to signal for overhead, all right, for something overhead to be able to see them. But lastly, it's turned nighttime now, and none of those are working. All right, everybody seen these before, yes? Yes, the glow stick. All right, so I break my glow stick, and I put it into operation. But they can't see this. So what's something I can do so they can see this? Put it high up in the tree. Way up in the tree. What else? Um, if you, I've actually tried this before. Is I tied a paper to one, and it You tied it to a paper? And it went up. Awesome. Okay. So if I tie it to the end of a paracord and I start spinning it, can you see that for a great distance? Yes. yes. All right. And that tells me that there's a living, breathing human being probably on the other side that's spinning that. And I can see that in the middle of the night helps me with um, rescue, search and rescue. All right. So lastly, we'll get to what your favorite part is, and most times mine too, is sleep and eat. All right. So what type of food do I want to pack to bring with me? Dehydrated. Yes. Lightweight, dehydrated. Awesome. On it. You want to bring like peanuts and all that for your protein. Protein. All right. What about pastas? Yeah. You can use that. Why? Because, um, because it's still dehydrated. Yeah. Because it's still dehydrated. It is. Even though when you cook it, it's not. There you go. All right. And you're going to have what with you? As best as possible. Water. You have mess kit, fire, water. Water. All right. So water rehydrates my pasta. So I can make my dehydrated cup of noodles that you eat at home anyway. You can put those into a plastic bag now. Crush them all up because it don't matter how pretty they look when they're out in that type of environment. All right. With your mess kit or your canteen cup, pour them in there, a little water on top, heat them up. And now you have a meal with your carbs in there. All right. Carbs build. Turn it to energy, energy sugars. All right, your proteins. What are you gonna use for your proteins? We said it. Somebody said it already. Peanuts. Your nuts. Peanuts. Beans. Beans. All right. Dehydrated things. And then I always like to carry some type of a protein bar, something lightweight. I can eat this on the go. I don't have to stop, set up a fire in order to consume this. I can eat this while I go. Yes, ma'am. Also, if you're um, like like two miles away from where you're supposed to be. You can just get like a chocolate, chocolate or candy bar just to get you the five minutes. And it does what? What does it do uh, for you? Spikes you. Spook. You said it. Boosts your energy, spikes your energy. All right, sugars was, is one of your instant um, energy boosters. All right, you can get those and go. And then finally, when it's time to lay down for the evening, try to get you some rest before you pack it up and do it all again. All right, most everyone likes to use sleeping mats, sleeping bags on the ground. I bought our modular sleep system with us. All right. All right. It has heavyweight bag, which is this one. All right. It has your lightweight bag. which is this one, and it has your weather fly on it, so I can go outside, I can use it outdoors, all right, I don't have to be covered in order to use it, I can use it out, it's waterproof, all right, three pieces to it, put them all together, I can sleep outside in snowy conditions, inclement weather conditions, rain does not help you fully in rain, you're still going to get soaked, all right. But that being waterproof, the dew of the morning will roll off of it for the most part. All right. I'm not a fan of it. I've used it. I prefer, if anything, the light part of the sleeping bag and a simple hammock. All right. I tie a hammock between two trees, and I get the same exact rest that you're going to get tossing and turning on the ground. Furthermore, if I turn my legs out of my hammock in the morning, I now have a chair that I can operate in until I'm fully dressed and ready to operate where you are going to be on the ground. All right. So, I paid $20 for the hammock. Bottom line is, backpacking can be very, very expensive. All right? And I don't want you guys going out and just up and starting to buy all this equipment because you saw that I had. That's not the goal. The goal is to work with what you have all right, and make it work for the environment that you're going to.
So, let's pack out. This is the part of the class that I like to do. Somebody tell me what all I need to be successful. In our all right, I'm taking my I'm taking my pack this time. So tell me what I need to be successful. All right, you need your rope. All right, throw some rope in there. The canteen. Canteen. You're gonna need your canteen. All right. You're gonna need your fire starter. Okay. Fire starter. You're gonna need that Mr. Good bar. Yep. You're gonna need your boots. Uh huh. Let's throw them in there. Then your socks. All right. You need a pair of socks. Yeah. Your sweeping. Your sweeping thing. That roll up sock with the shirt in it. So I need my clothing. Yes. yes. Need, All right. You need weight. You fire need we got that already. What else? The all right, I got the washcloth, the corn, yep. What else? No stick. Nah, yep. Signaling device. Which one? The um, the pink. The pink orange. Yes, 17 pounds. Yes, sir. All right, what else? You're going to need your, um, more rope. You're going to need a lot more rope. I need some more rope. All right, so I'm going to throw some more rope in there. You're going to need your poncho. Poncho. One poncho. They're going to need your shovel. See? All right, shovel. You're going to need that wood tie tool. Yeah, yeah wood tie tool. Okay, my wood tie tool. Mm-hmm. You're going to need that for work right there. Another one? Good grief. And then you're going to need your peanuts. Okay. You need your peanuts. You have your boots on. What else? More rope. More rope. I think I'm about out of rope. Sure. No, you're going to need that canteen holder. Canteen hold, canteen cup. Yeah. You're going to need um all those belts over there. All of them. All right. Just in case I'm happy to see. I can let it get in the register. What else? Do you need one belt? Um, no. Just to be safe. You can never be too safe. Um, your <laughs> hammer. My hammer? Okay, yeah. I won't forget that. Definitely want What else? Your camel pack. Yes. Camel pack. Um, you already have a sleeping bag? No. Nope. Plastic bag. Sleeping bag. Sleeping bag. All of it? Part of it? All of it. All of it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, y'all see the problem I just ran into? Yeah, you What's the problem? You didn't pack it correctly. I didn't pack it correctly. Alright. I didn't. Or I just took a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. Which one? Both. Okay, both. Alright. So that brings me to the second part of the class is how to load your pack correctly. Alright. What items are essential and what you don't need. Alright? Okay, I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, remember, this is part one of a two-part video. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for the second portion of it, where we're actually be going into how to pack all the items that were shown to actually properly pack the backpack. So stay tuned for that. Also, be sure to hit the thumbs up and like this video. Also hit the subscribe button. There'll be other videos coming up related to camping, to backpacking, to product and gear review that you don't want to miss. So be sure you subscribe to the channel. Be sure you like us on Facebook as well. The Pathfinders United. And remember, we are the Pathfinders United, uniting Pathfinders across the world. Until the next time.